Alright, welcome to my first video with my new iPad. Pretty psyched about it. And in this video we're going to cover the Law of Sines. And the Law of Sines is an equation, uh, which is like a triple proportion here, and it relates the angles of a triangle to its sides in a very nice, kind of easy to remember way. Um, and it works for any triangle, so this works for right triangles, obtuse, acute, any triangle, which is kind of what makes it special, um, because no longer when you're finding the sides of a triangle do you have to sort of drop in an altitude and make, you know, look at a right triangle. This will work in any triangle. Now before we do this example, just a convention, remember that uh, in a triangle, capital letters always stand for the angles, lowercase letters stand for the sides. And the way that you determine what the sides are once the angles are labeled is opposite angle A is always side A, opposite angle B is always side B, and opposite angle C is always side C. All right, so that's a convention that will, will never change. All right, so let's solve this triangle. We're given some information about it. Notice I have this set up here. I'd like you to do that for me so that I can see your answers clearly at the end of the problem and then leave the rest, you know, your workspace over here. But this way your, your information is all in one place. Angle A is 36 degrees. Angle B is 48 degrees. And side A is 8. Nice. So now our goal is to find, obviously, the other three sides. Uh, the other three pieces, I should say. Now, angle C, uh, we don't really need the law of sines to find that because we know that the three angles in a triangle add up to 180. So if we just do 180 minus 36 minus 48, we'll get angle C, which is 96 degrees. All right, but for sides B and C, we will need to use the law of sines. And so according to the law of sines, sine of A over A equals sine of B over B. So I have all the info for A, I have the angle for B, I just don't have the side. But when I set up my equation, I'll have three of the four pieces and I'll just have a solve for the fourth. So sine of 36 degrees over 8 is equal to sine of 48 degrees divided by B. Okay, and now notice this. at this point we need to solve for B. It's in the denominator, which is a little awkward, but if we multiply both sides by 8B, which in other words means to cross-multiply, we end up getting 8 sine forty eight degrees is equal to B times sine of thirty six degrees. And at this point I will divide both sides by sine of thirty six degrees. So you'll notice I didn't put anything in the calculator yet. I kinda wait to the end. You can if you feel comfortable putting I mean if you don't feel comfortable doing this manipulation, you can put sine of forty eight and sine of thirty six into the calculator now or at the beginning of the problem, but I like to wait to the end so that uh, I don't have to worry about rounding errors or anything like that. So now I go to my calculator and put in 8 times sine of 48 degrees. Make sure you're in degrees, by the way. And then I divide that by sine of 36. And you get that B is equal to 10.115. So we're going to round to thousands place. We're going to pretend we're land surveyors or engineers. And round to the thousands place, be pretty precise. So B is 10.115, so I'm going to record that up here. And now I'm going to go ahead and find angle C. So angle C, I'm going to, I have two options now. I have all the information for angle A, uh, for letter A, and all the information for B. Um, so I can use either one of those as my sort of full, uh, full ratio, but I always start with the one that was given to me in the problem. So I'm going to do sine 36 over 8 again. And I'm going to set that equal to the sine of 96 degrees over C. I'm going to cross multiply again to get that C times sine of 36 degrees is equal to 
8 times sine of 96 degrees, and then I'm going to divide by sine of 36 degrees. And then I'm going to go to my calculator, 8 times sine of 96, and divide that by sine of 36, which gives me 13.536. Good. So we've successfully solved this triangle wasn't too bad and there will be some nuances later uh, certain special cases we'll have to consider but and when you're given two angles in the side uh, you can get all the angles and all the sides using the loft signs it's really nice let's scroll down here you're gonna do this problem yourself but just notice notice that to solve this triangle we weren't given the information uh, with letters we're just given the triangle with some information filled out and so what I'd like you to do uh, when you, you're in this situation is label your triangle, and it doesn't matter what you call A, B, and C, but once you do call the angles, uh, once you do label the, let, the angles, that immediately determines what side A is. So what I mean by that is up here, if we write A, B, C, these are my angles, and my sides A, B, and C, well, according to my diagram, angle A is 24 degrees, and angle B is 63 degrees. And because of how I labeled it, that means that side A must be 7, okay, because it's opposite angle A, which means we don't have information on uh, angle uh, side B or side C. So what I'd like you to do is go ahead and solve this, pause the video, and go ahead and solve it. And uh, after you do that, I'm just going to, you can unpause it and I'll write down the answers so that you can check. So pause now. All right, so I'm assuming you paused and here are the answers. All right, how'd you do? Hopefully well.